a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to laugh, and a, la a time to get and to get those time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. Tonight we come for a time of thanksgiving for a life well spent. So we stand as we pray and start the evening time of service and memorial for knowing. So we stand. Our Father, we thank you so much for your grace and your goodness, for your message of hope, for this man's life, knowing and how it was spent. We pray that we might all aspire to live as well as Noe did. We thank you that he is now safe in your presence. And we pray that today, tonight, you will fill us with faith and guide us along our way so that we might end up in the same place when it is our time. We thank you, Father, this time for those who participate in this great time of remembrance and service, for the music, for the testimonies, and for the message from your word. We thank you. And now might we focus on you, the author and of our finish of our faith, to give you all the glory and the praise for who you are. And for those who are here do not know where they are going, if the time comes that, Father, as a result of our time together, they will make that decision to know you personally as Savior and as Lord. Just we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi, everyone. Um, uh, me and my brother are just going to talk a little bit about my father's life. Um, my father's life was one of compassion, love, and joy. For as long as I can remember, all he wanted from my brother and I was to spend time with each other. He loved to watch movies, play tennis with us, take us to the park, sometimes even when we didn't want to go. But I realize now, all he wanted was, uh, all he wanted was for us to bond. Some of my fondest memories of us together was when my parents would take us to Shoreline Drive in Long Beach, my brother and I riding our bikes, and I could see my mom and dad, hand in hand, walking together as we enjoyed the beautiful day. This was my father's life. He lived and exemplified love and joy. You may remember him for his corny jokes, but now I realize he just wanted us, he just wanted to see us smile and to share those kinds of moments with each other. He taught me to work hard, live a life with honor, and to always trust the Lord. He set the example for us. He always provided whatever our family needed, not only for us or our immediate relatives, but also for our extended family, our church family. Some of you may remember our big blue van, which our family affectionately named Bluey. Bluey took us to many youth spring camps, many family camps in Heartland and even a cross-country trip in bed. As time passed, and when it was time to get rid of Bluey, our van, I remember Dad didn't want to get rid of it because it reminded him of all the times we spent together. Even now in his passing, I know he would not want us to worry or to cry. Such was his personality. When he was diagnosed with cancer, he did not want my brother and I to know because he didn't want us to worry. Only when his cancer got really bad was when we found out. I realize now how selfish and self-centered my actions and decisions were, and I aim to honor my father 
in word and in deed. On behalf of myself, Eric, and Mom, thank you all for coming to remember my father's life. <clears throat> wow. What's up, Ryan? Um, <laughs> to me, my dad was not only my dad, my father, provider for our family, but he was also, if you come to our house, you'll see that almost everything in there was built by him, or at least fixed by him. So he was a builder, he was my teacher, and <clears throat> he's also known to me as a giver. <clears throat> he taught me how to be kind, taught me how to love properly, and he's always gonna be, <clears throat> excuse me, be a best role model of how to love someone, and to love others, and how to just be a kind person, and how to be best example of a Christ-serving man. Just like my brother said, we always used to take uh, road trips, <laughs> either with his uh, old white man or an uh, old blue man named Bluey. <laughs> remember driving across country from here to all the way to Florida, and we were playing this game, and my dad was driving, and during the game, um, police sirens went off, <laughs> and then my dad got scared. He thought there was cops around him. <laughs> <clears throat> like I said, my dad taught me how to do a lot of things, and I always thank him for all the lessons he's taught me, and just teaching me how to do everything to be a man. And yeah, so thanks, Dad. I miss you. Thank you all for coming. I went to visit him with my family and what, what impressed me was he loved music so much as part of his worship and uh, it reminded me of a, of a song. I'm not going to sing it for you, but the, po the poetry goes like this. This was a life well lived here upon the earth, but he never lost sight of eternity. In the twinkling of an eye, he slipped from death to birth and set his sail upon the crystal sea. The beauty of that city, such a wonder to behold, the splendor of that promised land where streets are paved with gold. He's made the final journey and now he's home to stay. He caught a glimpse of heaven and it took his breath away. He walked a winding road that was sometimes steep, believing hope was just around the bend. He left a life he knew that he could not keep to find one that he knew would never end. No more pain, no more fear, only joy, no more tears. The beauty of that city is such a wonder to behold, the splendor of that promised land where streets are paved with gold. He's made the final journey and now he's come to stay. He caught a glimpse of heaven, and it took his breath away. We're going to worship, and this is one of the many songs that really only a believer could really sing if it meant anything to you. Let's all stand together, and I know that he's at the in heaven enjoying the presence of our Lord, and we're going to sing this song together, Blessed Assurance, one of his favorite songs. Blessed Assurance. Jesus is mine.
mother, father, uncles, aunts, cousins, nephews, nieces, pastors, co-workers, and friends. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Nene Ibigindan Cabalinas Masas. I'm here on behalf of the Divintindan, which is on my mother's side of family, and the Pabalinas, my father's side of family. Kuyanwe is the only child of my late grandfather, Lolo Ignacio Pabalinas. Um, my grandfather and Lolo Ignacio were brothers and my late auntie, Mama Rita, or Lorela, David Ignan Pabalinas. Uh, Mama Rita and my mother were sisters. That's why I'm related on both parties. At that time, uh, the two eldest sisters decided to split the nine siblings on my mother's side. Queen West parents um, raised four of his mother's siblings because our grandfathers or grandparents were killed during the Japanese occupation of the Philippines during the World War II. And my mother is one of them that they raised. Queen and I grew practically like brothers and sisters, even though he's the only child. Between the Demipindan and Pabalinas family, we're one big family. I mean, huge family. Kuyanue's parents planted a seed on both families. Those seeds were leading most of us to the Lord by believing and accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior. Through those spiritual seeds, Many of us are involved in pastoring, missionary, or God's ministry. As the Bible scripture says in Proverbs 22 6, this is the King James Version train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Queen West's uh, death is so sudden, but he's in a better place right now. With his dad, mom, aunts, uncles, cousins, nieces, nephews, and friends. No more tears, no more pains, no more sufferings, and no more sickness. Everything is perfect in the sight of the Lord. As the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 8, to be absent in the flesh is to be present in the Lord. And on Psalms 116, verse 5, Precious is the sight of the Lord, is the death of his saints. Kuyo Nue was not perfect, but he had Jesus, and now he's safe in the loving arms of the Lord. To God be all the glory, honor, and praise. Hello, everyone. <coughs> My name is Daniel Tolero. I wish to express my deepest condolences to the Noe family. It saddens me on his passing and to speak on this occasion. However, I am grateful to be able to share with all of you some of my experiences with Noe. I first met Noe when we were both attending college at California State University, Long Beach over 40 years ago. We were in the PAC together. For those of you who are not familiar with the PAC, it's an acronym for the Filipino American Coalition. It was and still is a student social club 
that enables Filipino American students to interact with each other in a university setting. When Noe and I met at a PAC meeting, neither of us could or would realize how long our friendship would last. In those PAC times, Noe and I participated and enjoyed many social functions together. It was a fun time, and for being young, from fundraising for the club, discoing at dance events, and enduring some hilarious mishaps that occurred in the weekend camping trips with the other PAC members. There were occasions when Noe and I would have long discussions about our ideas, dreams, and yes, gossip about friends and friendships. Our discussions generally ended up in friendly banter and joking around. This comes, I remember, I commented about his hair. Hey, Noe, looks like a jungle up there. Thick. Maybe you should mow it down and thin it out. Noe replied, just because you look like you're balding doesn't mean I have to. As the years went by, Noe and I were able to see each other in the PEAC annual alumni reunions as our circumstances allowed. It was just as fun to talk with him as a, in our college days. When my wife and I visited Noe in this hospital this June, he saw us coming in and smiled like as before. I knew that he was happy to see us as much as we were glad to see him. In that hospital bed, with his family around him, Noe talked to us about his life's event, his relationships, and how he was preparing to face death in peace. I cannot but marvel how calmly and in clinical detail he spoke about liver cancer and its finality. I admire his ability to talk frankly with us about his life for his wife and family. And his concerns does it, that his sons are left with no misunderstandings or regrets. I honor that he held no anger or rage against life's latest turn and twist. Just like our conversations that went back and forth in our younger days, Noah could still interject a joke and poke fun at a serious situation. Laying there in that hospital bed, I can see grace has a light side. Noe, thank you for being my friend. Like those years long ago, I don't think either of us would guess or realize that our friendship would lead to one of us being there at the other's end. As I stand here in front of your coffin, Noe, I say now, goodbye, my friend. Thank you. Hi. Uh, my name is uh, Sergio Pavelinis, and I'm second cousin of Noe. Noe and I were raised in different environments. I was born and raised in the Philippines, 
when I was growing up back home, I never met him but heard him about truly father and some relatives. We just happened to get acquainted in two, about 23 years ago when I moved in, my family, from New Mexico to Long Beach. That is after I retired from the military. The way I look at Norway, he was a very simple, white person, always smiling, and I can see his standing right behind me, probably smiling. And I never heard from him talking about anything bad to anyone. Never criticized someone's life. And he's a very generous, God-fearing person. Kind, I love his family very much. So then we made the talk in a short period of time, but we covered a lot. We talk about our family, work, ourselves as well. I remember that 75 Volkswagen Beetle that he offered to me to have it. And I looked at him, I said no. But he insisted. And I told him, just promise me to take good care and don't sell it. Bring back when you don't want it no more anymore. Without hesitation, I accepted and thanked him and drove it home. A few months later, I fixed it a little bit. I'm not a mechanic. And I faded it. I'm not a pain reader. But it's not great that bad. And I will also uh, fix the interior, put a new uh, upholstery in it, and it runs good. And uh, the way I look at Noe, he's almost a quiet handyman, as everybody knows about it. He knows almost anything or everything around the house, fix it. fixing anything, like an electrical thing, plumber. Is a plumber too? A mechanic and a welder, carrier and to name a few. As usual, we met again and talked different things. Our family, our job, home, projects, and so forth. Until to the point that he asked about the Volkswagen again. And I told him the car was running well, I said. I said, I'm used most of the time it just parked at that driveway. So I asked me, can I have it? I said, sure. I said, I promise you can have it back. Yeah, the point was, he let me use it for a few years. He gave it to me for free in the first place. And in return, and in return he wasn't a buyback for me. I said, no, that's not, that's not a good deal. <laughs> you let me use it for a few years, and the lady went back uh, and gave me some money. And he offered me money for my labors and expenses, and he insisted to take it. So, that was him, knowing a very generous and a kind and understanding of my situation, so I thank, thanks him again. I said to myself, life is tough when you're in a struggle to support your family. You have to survive. If you, if you do your thing in a honest way, he said, don't you worry, there's always a reward coming your way. A blessing from the above. Through him, I learned a lot from him to be a better person, 
I'm already good, but he wanted me to get better. And I thanked him again. On your wife, Cynthia, and the children, Eric and Brian, I salute you for your great love, care, and support for him until his last breath. And for you, my friend, my cousin, away. You did a great job as a loving, generous, kind, and caring husband and wife and father. We love you and will miss you. May you have an eternal life in the kingdom of God in heaven. For all my cousin and best friend, we love you. We'll miss you. God bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to be reading from um, James. <coughs> James chapter 4, verse 14, and it goes, <clears throat> Why, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. <clears throat> There's a song that my dad always used to sing and play the piano to when he was younger. The song is titled, Only One Life. Um, and... <clears throat> Just remembering how my dad always used to sing, the, him and my mom would always sing karaoke at the house, even when it was late. So, in remembrance of this song, we have uh, Caitlin Obi in here to sing it for us.
Diablo and came in with us here tonight to do Noah's memorial service. And they were specifically um, requested by Noah when he was still alive. So tonight, we are, going, we are celebrating Noah's life. We're sad that he's not here anymore with us physically. I remember the night when he was so sick at Anaheim Kaiser that we thought he was living that night. Myself and Eric were crying so hard, and all of a sudden he said, You guys, you stop crying. I don't want to see you cry. So Eric and myself, in the middle of our sobbing, we suddenly stopped. He doesn't want us to cry. So, um, at a count of three, I want all of us to give Noah a smile. Okay, everybody, ready with your smile? One, two, three, smile. Thank you, that's, what, that's how we want us to be remembered. You've heard from Ning, who's uh, like a sister to Noe. And Dan Tolero, who's a longtime friend of his. And Bebo Sergio Capalinas, one of his um, cousins. Noe was a wonderful man, and it's hard for me to put into words how I'm going to miss him. For 31 years, he was my soulmate. He was my best friend and a good father to our children. He was a solid foundation of our family and his loss is tremendously felt. But I see the values that have instilled to our children. Now we had a zest for life and love to get out of the house with a whole family going on long driving to different parts of the country. There was a time when we had a suburban van that seated 15 people and we hauled a trailer at the back. The three families, the Dahais, the Prudentius, and the Pavalinas, we drove to different states. Noe was a generous and kind-hearted man. Every time we went home to the Philippines, he would give our driver a generous tip. His reason was he loved to see his smile. Noe had a desire to fix things himself at home. He was a kind of a do-it-yourself kind of guy. We have, yes, he had too many tools, electronics, compressors, and other things inside the garage. Our garage was his tool shed. He has too many letters that one time I told him that if he were to stack his letters one on top of the others, and on top of the other, he could have reached heaven already. He loved telling me how things work and how he how his tools how to use his tools. I was happy to listen because his light his eyes would light up and I enjoyed being included in his passion. Another thing that Noe loved to do was to listen to the oldest but goodest kind of music. His favorite singers were Frank Sinatra, Johnny Mathis, Matt Monroe, Andy Williams, and many others. He even brought his iPhone to work because he loved to listen to them. We both liked to sing with a karaoke even to the wee hours of the, wee hours of the morning. No, we loved to play tennis since he was a young person. In fact, that's how he and Pastor Mel got to know each other. Even though he was already diagnosed and was sick, he still went to the, to, uh, to the tennis court to play with his buddies. During his last two weeks at home, we spent most of the time watching the Wimbledon, which is a tennis match in England. He's also known for his jokes. He made his co-workers laugh, and this is one thing that his co-workers will miss him, of, miss him most of. Noe was a good Christian man. He had touched many lives in one way or another. His actions spoke louder than his words. One of his favorite life verses is found in John 15, 13 that says, Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. <coughs> Noah lived the life the best way he could. 
know he was well loved, and I guess seeing everyone you here tonight proved that he is well loved. Marrying him was the best decision I ever made in my life. His memory will live on in each one of us because now we had touch. One of us in one way or another. He will be missed more than words can express. Now he leaves the legacy of love and integrity to his family and friends. He had left behind wonderful memories as a wonderful husband, a loving father, a good friend, as an uncle, as a cousin, as a funny, as a funny co-worker. No, he is in heaven right now. He is finally reunited with his parents and with everybody else who had accepted Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. We were able to say our goodbyes to him and let him go. Was that so painful? Knowing that he is at peace and he is with the Lord. As I would finally call him, we will see each other again. And we will live happily ever after. It may sound like a fairy tale, but heaven is a real place. A perfect place of peace and of blissful joy. I would like to quote Isla Pascal Richardson. She says, Grieve not nor speak of, speak, of me, speak, of, speak of me not in tears, but laugh and talk of me as if I were there with you. And that's how Noe wanted to be remembered. Our family would like to thank each one of you for coming here tonight to help celebrate, celebrate Noe's life. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I'm Ren Savio, and I'm the pastor of New Hope Community Church just around the corner in Hawaiian Gardens. And three and a half years ago, I was able to reconnect with Uncle Noe and the Pavolinos family when uh, we came uh, to do a church plant at FCFC. And uh, I'm just so thankful for this man and the legacy that he has left behind. Um, Eric and Brian, I remember that little man. He's <laughs> like, served first as the youth pastor at FCFC, and also the story that um, Sister Cindy just shared. That Saturday night when I received a text message from her saying that Uncle Noe's time was close, and I remember the shock of that message because I had just seen him that Wednesday night. He had come to church to pick up Eric, after um, after practice of the, the worship team and we were talking and we were joking around and then all of a sudden to hear just a few days later that he was really in a downward spiral was really shocking well tonight i've been given the task of sharing some words of hope but really what do we say in times like these what can we say? And so I'd like to direct our attention to the scriptures because it's truly um, wonderful to hear testimonies of Uncle Noe, but more so it's good to understand where he was coming from. And as you heard tonight, it's because he firmly places faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And so I'd like to share with you a story that's found in the book of John, in the 11th chapter. And here, this is the story that some of you may know, the story about Lazarus. And so chapter 11 starts off with the fact that there was a certain man who was sick by the name of Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. And so 
the connection there is that Brother Noe had also gotten sick, right? But in verse 35 of that chapter, this is the shortest verse, but one of the most impactful verses contained in the Bible. Verse 35 of chapter 11 said, Jesus wept. Jesus wept. And it is times like these where we must give each other permission to grieve because we have just lost a loved one. And sometimes we just don't even know what to say. We don't know how to act during times of grief. But here Jesus shows his humanity when he wept. Because Jesus knows how it feels to lose a loved one to death. Lazarus was his very, very good friend. And in fact, when Jesus appeared, both Martha and Mary said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And the, the chapter goes on that Jesus saw Mary and Martha weeping and the others and his spirit was troubled and he groaned. Do you know how that is? That's when grief just hits you so hard that your spirit is just groaning with sorrow. Well, Jesus knows how it feels to lose a loved one to death. Sister Nang read earlier Psalm 116.15, which says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Now, how does Jesus understand what we're going through now? Because John 1, verse 14 says that he became flesh and he dwelt among us. So when this verse says he wept, it meant that he shed tears in quiet anguish. He shed tears in quiet anguish. That is genuine human emotion. Because he became flesh like us, we have a God that can sympathize with us, with the intensity of the grief that we feel at this time. Now, what are the, the words of hope in this passage? Well, there's an interaction here between Martha and Jesus. When, when Jesus said to Martha, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him in verse 24, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And then Jesus said this very important question to Martha. He said, do you believe this? Now we've heard testimony tonight and I heard testimonies last night that without a doubt, Brother Noe, Uncle Noe, placed his faith and trust in Jesus Christ. He believed this. So the words of encouragement here, the words of hope here is that if we place our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, then this promise applies to us. When Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life, he who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives in me shall never die. And how did he back this up? Because when he saw the people crying, when he saw the people in deep anguish, he said, where is he? And they showed Jesus the tomb where the body of Lazarus was placed in, according to verse 38, and a stone lay there. And then Jesus said something just incredible that was just mind-blowing when he said, take away the stone. Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench. 
for he has been dead for days. And Jesus' response is so revealing when he said, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Where is the hope here? He said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And then he said this, he cried out with a loud voice, and he said, Lazarus, come forth. Now he had been dead four days. He had been dead four days. Martha even said, right now there is going to be a foul odor because the body had started to decay. But is anything impossible for Jesus Christ? Verse 43 said, when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And then what happened? What happened? In the midst of all these people who were grieving, who were crying, forty-four says, "And he who had been, he who had died, came out bound hand and foot with great clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. If you're a young person today, that would, that moment would be called a mic drop." Can you imagine that scene? People are crying, people are grieving, people are in mourning for a loved one. Jesus comes on the scene, lays out a promise that if you believe in me, though you die, you will live. And he backed it up when he said, Lazarus, you've been dead four days, but come forth. And he came out of the tomb. Mic drop. You can see Jesus saying, right? How incredible is that? Now, if you need some words of hope, that is packful of hope. That if you also have placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, like Uncle Noe did many years ago, that promise is for you. Now, Pastor Frank opened up our time tonight that some of you here, may not know that truth. But that truth applies to you as well if you accept Jesus' invitation to be one of his followers. Now, I can say this because I know that Jesus was in the business of life assurance. Not life insurance. Life assurance. According to that passage, he assures us life. But if you have life insurance and you're older like, well not me, Pastor Frank, <laughs> it would be impossible almost to purchase life insurance because your morbidity or your likelihood of dying is sooner. He's, I think he went to school with Moses. <laughs> so can you imagine the premiums that he would have to pay? But guess what? Guess what? Jesus being in the business of life insurance, he not only gave the policy, but Jesus paid the steep premium that was required because of sin. He paid it all. He gave it his all. He went the distance because us, you collectively, we were his passion. Now, you just heard Auntie Cindy make a bold statement that Uncle Noe is with Jesus. How do we know this? See, in times of moments like this, this is where we wonder, man, I never really think about dying. But when you really take the time to think about death, the question will always follow, where will I end up? Tonight, you heard of the Cindy, stay without any reservation. 
that Uncle Noe is with Jesus. How do we know that? Well, 1 John chapter 5, verses 11 to 13, written by the same guy in John chapter 11, said this. This is the testimony. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Now, because Uncle Noe places faith and trust in Jesus, bodily form is here, but his spirit, his soul is with the Lord. Someone quoted earlier, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Now, verse 15 of 1 John 5 says this, John said, I write these things so that you may know. Not wonder, not hope, but that you may know that you have eternal life. Why is that? Because as we saw in our passage in John 11, Jesus is the resurrection and Jesus is the life. The problem is, do we believe this? I want to close our time with a passage in John 14. Because this is something that's important for us. As Uncle Cindy said that now, Uncle Noe is with his parents. His family who've gone on to be with Jesus. Here in John 14, Jesus writes, or John writes, where Jesus is speaking, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I wouldn't have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Isn't that beautiful? I go to prepare a place for you, Jesus said. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Do you want to be where Uncle Noe is at this moment? Well, here's the key. Verse 14 says, we, verse 5, Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? And here Jesus gives another mic drop moment. He says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You want to spend eternity in heaven? And you want to see your loved ones again? And you want to see Uncle Noe again? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Only through Him, only through Him can we go to the Father. Now, at this time, I want to direct some of my comments to both Brian and Eric. Fellas, I don't know how you are really feeling right now because my father is still alive. But you've heard people speak about your dad. And so I know that he won't be around when you get married. He's not going to be around when your children are born. He's not going to be around for some incredible big time moments of your life. So what you young men need to do is to honor the legacy of your father. And to, earlier tonight, Brian said that he wanted to make sure to make his dad proud. And I told him, Brian, your father was already proud of you. Eric, your dad was already proud of you. Now the task for you, young men, is to carry on the Pavolina's legacy. Live the lives that your father had envisioned for you, that he could sacrifice for you, that he provided for you. And the things that you heard me say tonight and Pastor Ted say last night, fellas, it can't just be theoretical now. You've got to take scripture. You've got to take your relationship with the Lord seriously. 
because that's what your dad did. Some of you may have seen the slideshow, but a few weeks prior to Uncle Noah's passing, he came to church. I had texted Cindy and I said, can we visit you after service? And she said, we're coming to church. And I said, wow, really? And when I saw him enter the church, and he said, Pastor Ryan, I'd like to say a few words. And I said, a few words, you can give the message. Right? And he came. And fellas, this is what he said. I wish I had more time that I could serve the Lord. So guys, if you want to really honor the memory, the legacy that your father has laid down before you, serve the same Lord that your father loved and served. Mm. Last night, Pastor Ted referenced a poem by C.T. Studd, and it was also referenced by the song that Caitlin sang so beautifully earlier. But the title of this poem is Only One Life. I'd like to read the entire poem to you because it really encapsulates the life of Uncle Noe. This is by Charles Thomas Studd. He said, only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Two little lines I heard one day, traveling along life's busy way, bringing conviction to my heart, and from my mind would not depart. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. So only one life, yes, only one, soon will its fleeting hours be done. Then in that day my Lord to meet, and stand before his judgment seat. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Only one life, the still small voice, gently pleads for a better choice, bidding me selfish aims to leave and to God's holy will to cleave. Only one life, twill soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Only one life, a few brief years, each with its burdens, hopes, and fears. Each with its claims I must fulfill, living for self or in his will. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. When this bright world would tempt me sore, when Satan would a victory score, when self would seek to have its way, then help me, Lord, with joy to say, only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Give me, Father, a purpose deep, in joy or sorrow, thy word to keep. Faithful and true, whate'er the strife, pleasing thee in my daily life. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Oh, let my love with fervor burn, and from the world now let me turn, living for thee and thee alone, Bring thee pleasure on thy throne. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Only one life, yes, only one. Now let me say, thy will be done. And when at last I'll hear the call, I know I'll say, twas worth it all. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. And the last says, only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. And when I am dying, how happy I'll be if the lap of my life has burned out for thee. Uncle Noe's life burned out for Jesus. Until his last dying breath, he proclaimed Christ. And before we leave tonight, Pastor Frank is going to give you the invitation later on. 
He does such a good job of it. So I want to reserve that portion for him, for that honor for him. So I want to, again, just encourage you with hope that Uncle Noe's story on this side of heaven has ended. But on this side of heaven, his story has just begun. He's with Jesus now for all eternity. God bless you. We're going to continue to worship him. If we could all stand together and we're going to sing two great songs of He Loved His Music and He Was His.
open up this time now for anyone who would like to share some testimonies about Noe. Um, but when people in Hawaii heard, he also sent donuts to you in the family. Uh, from the people family, uh, when they heard, they were very grieved. But they knew where he is. They knew that he had a relationship with Jesus Christ. So they were sad, but they were also rejoiced. The Alcantara family also sent their condolences. Uh, Rod, who has a, a tennis racket, I think, from Norway, that he cherishes. The people that he played tennis with in Hawaii also sent their condolences. Uh, so as you kind of prepare yourselves for public speaking, uh, just be in mind that this really isn't public speaking. This is you talking to family, you talking to friends. So uh, make your way out of here. We have mics. Oh, okay. Okay. Sure. Uh, just so uh, you can kind of gather your thoughts. Uh, I met Noe like 1972 through one of the PAC meetings. But I didn't get to know Noe too much later. But uh, you see the impact that he has had to the PAC. There was a group of them who got together, I think it was last night, to celebrate his life. This is after 45 years of participation that they had developed at, at Cal State Long Beach. And, and, and that's part of the legacy that, that Noe had of building relationships, building friendships with people. And friendships and relationships that would last 45 years. And if that doesn't say anything about how he touched people, I don't know what can. So I'd like to just open uh, up now. Okay. Hello, my name is Catherine, and I'm a friend of the family from church. What to do when you are born and grow up to be an only child? Trust in God, brother Noah. Sons are a heritage from the Lord, children a reward from Him. Psalm 127, verse 3. What to do when you go to a foreign country to make it your second home and eventually your main home before you enter heaven? Trust in God, brother knowing. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. Find my soulmate. Dude, I don't even have a girlfriend. <laughs> Will I miss your wisdom? Will I long to be asking you for your blessing when the time has come? Trust in God, Brian. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 67. What to do when you are the younger son, while in vitro almost aborted due to mom's lupus. Thanks God that she trusted in the Lord with all her heart and leaned not on her own understanding. In all her ways acknowledged him and he, shot, and he directed her paths. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. College yet to finish. And yes, have an older brother to look up to. But single, though had I several ladies. But a soulmate, work in progress. Who am I going to talk to for fatherly advice on anything? Trust in God, Eric. 
As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Joshua 1, 5, B. What to do when you are told you have liver cancer? Is it stage one? Is it stage two? Is it stage three or stage four? I work in the lab. I may have some knowledge on these things. Is it really true or is this a test? A test of my faith. For sure, let me keep it quiet for a while. I don't want to be the center of attention, even for prayer. Trust in God, brother Noe, that you did. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Psalm 139, 13 to 14. What to do when wifey says, Hon, let's help an elderly pastor and his wife pack their things so they can move to another place. And yes, I cannot help much physically as my body is weak. But it is good to be out with my brothers and sisters. Oh no, what happens to the clogged toilet? Trust in God, Brother Noe. Brother Will fixed it. A friend loves at all times. Proverbs 17, 17 a. Why not What to do when there's so little time, so much to do for my Lord, so much eagerness, so much urgency, yet my body will not co uh, cooperate. Prayer, yes, yes, yes. Praying in tongues, oh no, what is that? Trust in God, Brother Noe. Maggie is not here today but rejoices with you as you are enjoying the fullness of God's glory. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. John 16, 13. What to do when your best friend is handed the C diagnosis? What? We're just thinking about retiring. Just started to do some traveling. We just started coming to the golden ministry. I must spend every moment with my soulmate. Time is of the essence. There's so much to talk about. Well, who to consult with regarding money matters, regarding our boys, regarding life. Who is going to sing karaoke with me until the wee hours of the morning? Who is going to ask me now, where is Noe? Oh, is it Sunday today? He's either at work, or if the weather is good, he is playing tennis. When it's time to sleep, and you are not there beside me, but honey, you were ready ready to be with our Lord. I praise God we had time to pick your favorite song for this service and who would be playing the music and who would be singing. Trust in God, Sister Cindy. Remember the Saturday morning prayers? Now you're going to be singing more praises because Brother Noe is in the presence of our Lord. My name is uh, Leela Bradford, and I've had the pleasure of knowing Noe for the past 28 years at the VA in Long Beach. Um, one of the first memories I have of Noe is on a summer afternoon, he had just finished doing a bone marrow upstairs, 
with another coworker, and he came down to the lab, and I was just new to California. Um, I mean, growing up in Texas, and I kept complaining, why does the floor feel so funny? Why are the walls moving? And he looked at me and kind of laughed and said, don't you know, that's the big one. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and I was terrified. I had never been through one before. And he was just, the smile on his face, <laughs> just the joker we always know, the laughs he would always, that was the kind-hearted side of knowing. And then I remember the man very well, always in the parking lot. And then one day I saw it in the neighborhood, and I realized, Noe, you live by me. <laughs> and then once the van was gone, then there was the big yellow truck. <laughs> and now how I miss that yellow truck in the parking lot every day. It's not there, but we have such sweet memories of him. He was always Mr. Fix-It. I have two tool drawers at work. That's because of Noe. <laughs> always had to have the right tool. We will all dearly miss him. You're very lucky, Cindy. And boys, your father was very special. Thank you. He's actually, out of anybody I've known, he's taken me farther across the country than uh, than anybody, even in my own family, pretty well. Um, when I was about 14, we all took a trip down to uh, Florida. She took about a week to get there, I want to say, and then another the three days, and then we could see another week to get back. And um, I was just, when I was younger, it always puzzled me because I barely knew a boy, you know? For, for the longest time, I thought I was going to know him. So, uh, for him to do something like that for me and never expect anything like that just blew my mind and continues to blow my mind today. And uh, growing up, I've always been there. And uh, me and my group of friends, Brian, we used to do stupid stuff together. And he would, he's the kind of parent that like, lets you learn your lesson, but he would never say anything to really discourage him from doing something wrong. Or at least not to me, but I would see him roll his eyes, and I would just be like, okay, I'm about to do something really dumb. And that would be nice. But um, later on, I, I um, had the pleasure of being a VA, a VA patient. And um, being a VA patient means you go around the blood drop. Basically, every time they come in, they ask you to go to the blood drop. And um, whenever I did that, I go to the blood Really a because even if my visits weren't so long, even if they were really far apart, I'd be there. And, uh, just to wake up. Hopefully, you guys have something else. Awesome.
best friends and um, most ardent supporters in the church. And so that has been a real blessing um, to be able to have him be a part of the ceremony. He wasn't able to come tonight, but um, it was just real special to be here to bring him up yesterday. Um, he always enjoyed Oh, my Papa. Oh. 